Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming for the City Council meeting. I will call this meeting to order. May I have the roll call, please? Councilmember Elliott? Here. Councilmember Garcia? Here. Councilmember Fitzhenry? Here. Councilmember Sandal? Here. Here. Mary um, Gattel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> would, um, seeing nobody for the open forum, would everybody please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance up here? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd ask for the approval of the minutes of the Special City Council meeting of September 24th, 2013, the Special City Council work session of September 24th, 2013, the regular City Council meeting of September 24th, 2013. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Presentations. Council Member Elliott. Thank you, Your Honor. We have a couple matters uh, on this evening regarding our, our wonderful school district. The, the first one, and it's both my pleasure and my honor to introduce Dr. Robert Slaughterbach, the uh, superintendent of the Richfield School District. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry to say this, it's the last time I'm gonna be introducing you to come before the city council as a superintendent, but my guess is, is you're gonna keep your hand in the mix for a long time to follow through on the wonderful, innovative and, and new programs you bought to this school district. So welcome, welcome to the city council. Yeah, <laughs> updates. Uh, I'm here tonight, I, I have to start with my uh, disclaimer. I'm not here to convince anyone to vote for or against the referendum that's coming up. I'm here to give you information and to answer any questions. And since this is my third year in a row in front of the council, I uh, will be very brief. I don't have, as you can see, I don't have many slides there as, a, at all. So I'll start. Uh, I was told it was just going to pop up. <laughs> there it is. Uh, we have a uh, referendum that is coming before the public at the fall election. Uh, just a little bit of clarification. There are actually, we, the school district has three separate levies. And last year, we were uh, asking for renewal of one of the three levies, and, uh, and what we thought was a modest increase. And uh, it was an operating levy, which means that the dollars went directly into the general, general fund and are used for all the things that we pay salaries, pay for the heat, that, that type of thing. The, the second levy that we have up this year is, is uh, actually an operational, I'm sorry, is actually a capital levy. And by definition, that means that it can only be spent on particular things. And in this particular case, uh, we're talking about uh, renewing our levy that pays for all of our technology and then asking again for what we think is a fairly modest increase. Uh, people have asked me, well, why do we need this authority? And uh, when I first put this slide up, someone raised their hand and said, well, you're not, you're not really talking about the start of the 19th century, are you? And I, I said, yes. Uh, this country realized in the early 1800s that it could not be a competitive country unless it had a very high literacy rate. So in the 1800s, public school was actually begun to educate the general public and to make sure that uh, the citizens citizenry uh, was able to read. These days, uh, to be a competitive nation, we have to have, we have to graduate people that have technological competence. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit here in just a few minutes. Uh, I would, uh, uh, the people that are watching this, and of course the city council, I think most people would understand that there are very few jobs in America today, well, across the world, that don't require some level of technological competence. Uh, from the most sophisticated engineers that are using computers to solve extreme, extremely difficult uh, questions to um, the person that tunes your car up at, at, at the Honda dealership. Mm -hmm. They're all using some type of uh, computer to assist them. 
We're also going to see over the near, over the probably the next decade or so, um, kind of a flip-flop in the way that people are learning. Up, up until um, fairly recently, you would have teachers in front of 25, 30 kids, and they would, they would give the children their knowledge, and the children would take notes and get the information from the teacher. That really is going to change, and it's going to change for all of our lives. Uh, people are, are going to have to be able to personally learn how to do things and, and uh, collect information. Um, and of course, technology is, uh, connects everyone these days. The levy that we're asking to renew was uh, 10 years ago, and at that time, uh, the connectivity that, we're, that I'm going to be talking about was uh, primitive compared to where we are these days. Over the last 10 years, this is what the levy has been spent on. People have asked me, well, it's $1.3 million approximately per year for 10 years. That's $13 million. That sounds like a lot of money, and it is, of course. But over that period of time, we've added 1,600 computers. That takes our computer to student ratio a little bit below three computers. I'm sorry, three students per computer. Um, there are many districts in the area that are, that are actually have decided they need to lower that to one to one. We're not talking about that at this time, but uh, we have added 1,600 computers over the past 10 years. And because computers wear out, uh, computers get old, computers, uh, their operating systems uh, have difficulty keeping pace with the new software. Uh, we have to replace our computers about every five years. That sounds like a fairly um, uh, um, short period of time to, to replace computers, but in reality, uh, 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 if you look in the business standard, that's actually not that rapid. And of course, we've had to develop infrastructure to connect all of this technology. We basically built a technology department over the last 10 years, software to make all of the machines connect and communicate and, and, and so forth. And we've, the, our technology staff over the last 10 years has increased from just, I believe there were two 10 years ago, to uh, we have a staff of a, a little less than a dozen people. Uh, again, that sounds like a, you know, a, a huge increase, but uh, I would remind people that uh, 10 years ago, we didn't have a, a computer for every 10 children, and now they're all connected, and, and uh, uh, they're much more sophisticated. So we have to have people that can keep all of uh, this up and running. There are two questions on the ballot. Uh, question one, uh, if voted yes upon, would not raise anyone's taxes. Uh, currently, the residents of Richfield that own an average home, and this figure we, we actually get from the city is $164,000 and a few cents, is the average home in Richfield. And at that amount, uh, people are currently paying $5.42 a month uh, to support the current levy. So we're asking for a renewal of that levy, and a yes vote for that would not raise that $5.42. We are asking on question number two, uh, to have a modest increase of $3.67 a month. So that comes to, on an average home, uh, uh, just about $40 a year that we're asking people to increase their taxes. Uh, how will the money be used? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we're seeing in uh, society these days uh, a wireless network. Uh, Ten years ago, when we started building this infrastructure, one of the things we were really working on was connecting all of these machines with wires. They're not connected with wires anymore. We're moving towards a wireless uh, technological base for almost any uh, industry standard or, or school district. That requires a much more sophisticated system. Uh, if you think about, say, 25 students in a room, all with a personal device, trying to stream video, for example, through their personal device, that's a lot of data that's running into those machines, and if we don't have the access points in the ceiling that can run that much information, or we don't have the switches, the, the master switches, uh, then the whole system bogs down, and, it, and it's, it, it's not a very good system. We will, of course, replace older equipment. We still have to uh, do that, and we're going to have to retrain our staff and our students towards these 21st century uh, skills. 
and uh, we're probably going to have to add another person or two to our staff in order to keep this whole system up and running. How much do we spend on technology? If both questions pass, we'll be spending approximately $2.2 .2 million a year. And I put up our, our uh, comparison so you can get a sense about uh, what other districts are spending. Our, our very, very good neighbor just to the south, Bloomington, is, is uh, not quite, is a, a little less than two times our size, and yet you can see they're going to be spending much more than two times how much we would be spending. St. Louis Park is approximately our size within 100 students or so, and you can see what they're spending to keep their systems up and running. Eden Prairie made a decision this year as uh, high school students entered the door, they were all given laptops uh, to be able to run their system. We're not, we're not proposing that. We don't think uh, that the city of Richfield would support that type of uh, uh, request. So we're trying to be we're trying to be sensitive to uh, the tax burden on, on um, the local, local citizens. Um, if question one, there's, it's a two part question. If question one fails, question two automatically fails. Now as a voter, you can walk in the booth and you can vote no on one and yes on two and it, that doesn't mean that your vote won't be counted. When all of the votes are, are counted together, if question one fails, then question two fails, no matter what the vote is on question two. Uh, if question two fails, we'll have approximately $900,000 less uh, than we would like to have to, in order to run the, our, our technology. And if both questions fail, then we have a very, very difficult decision. We can allow our system to basically begin to fall apart or we can take $1.3 million away from our general operating fund and, and fund our technology department with that. If we do that, of course, we put a bur burden on class size and uh, how often we can buy textbooks and, and so forth. So, so we're hoping that uh, uh, both of these will pass and we, we think uh, uh, we can answer any questions that people have about why we need this. Uh, I, and I always end with this particular slide. People can contact me directly. I think one of the things I really uh, love about Richfield is that people don't hesitate to come up to you in the grocery store and say, now I need to know about this. And we're there. We're, if people want to contact me directly, there's my phone number. It goes right to my desk. Uh, you can also connect with us through the website. And we still have a few people that uh, send us mail. And so there's our address. I, I will tell you that uh, we get very, very, very little mail these days. Uh, that has changed so much in my 19 years as a superintendent. I, my assistant, when I first started as a superintendent, probably spent an hour opening up my mail uh, to sort through what I needed to look at. And I can't tell you, maybe one letter a day now I get from, <laughs> from our citizens. So uh, I'll uh, stand for any questions that you might have. Council member, questions for Dr. Slaughterback? Just a comment. Please. Thank you for coming. We always appreciate hearing from you and learning what's new with the school district. And um, I know I will be supportive of this particular um, proposal because I know how important it is for our kids to stay current with modern technology. I can remember when my son, who graduated back in, what year was that? A long time ago, 17 years, eight, 20, 18, 20 years ago. And um, I couldn't believe it that he was using a computer when he worked at SA, you know, collecting money and pumping gas back in the old days. But everything is computerized these days, just everything. I, I don't know what job yeah. you have that you're yeah. not, in, you, you're you not connected in some way to a computer. Yeah, these and days. you have to be computer literate. Yes. I was going to ask a question, too. I mean, and maybe you have some idea about this. I don't know if you're the one who handles it, but do we get any technology grants or anything like this? And I know a lot of them have dried up with the economy, but is there other resources that we're able to tap into? At well, the over level? this last 10 years, not only have we had the levy support, but we also got money from Best Buy, for example, and Microsoft. And we do, get, uh, we do seek out grants as often as we can. But one problem with a grant, uh, we always explain to people, is that it's one-time money. So if you go out and say hire a tech person with a grant, well, when the grant goes away, yeah. you have to pay for the tech person, and then you have a, dis a tough decision to make. And frankly, 
the economy is just starting to come back and we're starting to see more opportunities for grants for a while there. It was, uh, it's pretty slim pickings for Do, do you grants. see a disparage between the students who have computers at home and those who do not? Definitely. Yeah, that's one of the things that we are going to have to work on. Uh, some of the districts that I, I put up there and how much they spend, they, they have 98, 99% of their families that are connected um, uh, when the children go home at night, and a lot of them have their own personal computers at night. We, ha we have about 20 to 30% of our families that are not connected. Uh, to the World Wide Web, and that's an issue that we're going to have to deal with. And we'll use some of this money to try to overcome some of those things. And we've talked about, you know, a lot of our students just don't have the dollars to be able to purchase a mm -hmm. smartphone, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them do. You'd be surprised how many kids have mm -hmm. smartphones. Yep. We, we do have a segment of our, uh, our student body that uh, it's, a difficult, it's difficult for them. It's a challenge. Um, yes. <clears throat> it didn't at one time uh, were some computers donated to the school and then they were yes fixed up and sold to a student like for a hundred dollars. Is we, that kind of program still around? Well, see, part of the problem is that you know people think, well, I have a computer that's eight years old. I'll donate right. it to the school. Its operating system won't run mm -hmm. the software that we have, mm -hmm. okay. and so it. it it, we always appreciate it when people think of us in those terms, uh -huh. but sometimes what's being donated really is we can't put in operation. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about that. Uh, right. Yeah. But at least if, if it, it were, would be possible at least to have a computer at home, Yes. It, it would open up, you know, some doors. And we're working with Comcast. They have a program that uh, mm -hmm. will help, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, we're exploring mm -hmm. a lot of different ways to make sure that our students are connected. And even for those of us who are limited in terms of, you know, our literacy on the computer, I mean, there's there's no question that we can't prosper as a community or, or in education or in the economy without, you know, being competent in in in, in the technology field. Well, we one of our goals, of course, is to make sure that when children graduate from Rich Hill High School, if they choose to, they can go to some type of post-secondary. Sure. We want everyone to be exactly. uh, be ready for that. You can't go into a post-secondary education system without having mm -hmm. computer competence uh, or literacy. It, mm -hmm. it, no, just, I think I think we this has got to pass because I think it's our future. It depends on it, and I mean that literally. I'm glad you're saying that because I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other questions? I appreciate you coming too, as well, always, and I'm sure you'll give us an update maybe too after the first of the year. Absolutely, and and uh, it's not that I don't like the city council, but I'm going to leave because you're going to hear from somebody that does have the right to try to convince people of this, uh, voting for this, and uh, um, we're, we're trying, Kevin and I are trying to uh, not get in each other's way because of the separation we have to Understand, have to understand. So thank you very much for thank having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Council member? Yeah, although Dr. Slaughterbuck tried to steal my thunder, I would like to <laughs> introduce a, another presentation by the Richfield Citizens for Equality community once again regarding the school district referendum. Hi, I'm Kevin Malik, um, representing Richfield Citizens for Equality community. And uh, like Dr. Slaughterbuck said, I am here to uh, encourage people to vote yes on both questions. Um, and to that end, um, we have a proposed resolution for you. Um, um, maybe a little background first. Richfield Citizens for Equality Community is a independent citizen committee currently working to uh, successfully pass um, both of the uh, 2013 capital project levy authorizations in support of the uh, uh, technology in the district. Um, the language of this resolution is very similar to the resolution um, passed by the City Council last October for the levy referenda on the 2012 ballot. Would you like me to read it? Please. Yes, okay. please. Uh, whereas the capital project levy dedicated to technology originally approved by voters in 2003 is expiring and whereas the 21st century learning environment requires schools to inc incorporate a broad range of technology so students can achieve the skills necessary for success in the digital age, 
and whereas a successful passage of the capital project levy authorizations will enable the district to maintain and enhance uh, the quality of equipment and training available to students and staff, and whereas successful passage of both levy authorizations will help support and challenge Richfield students and increase student achievement consistent with community expectations, and whereas the City Council is open to and supportive of all avenues of cooperation and collaboration with the Richfield schools, and whereas the City Council understands the necessity of a strong school system in order to attract and keep families, thereby assuring the future of our community, now, therefore, be it resolved that this Richfield City Council supports both both of the uh, November 5th, 2013 Capital Projects Leffey Referenda for the Richfield School District 280 and encourages residents to vote yes on both ballot questions. Okay. It's okay. Well, so, so continue on. At that uh, um, that was the uh, end of the referendum. Are there questions or, or, or comments? This is your item. Yeah, um, I just need to ask for the protocol. It's it's presented as a proposed city council resolution. Um, do we need to amend the agenda to add this so that we could vote on it so that we can get it and get it in place? And to the agenda, do we or have do to we put need it to advance it to the next city council? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the city council, I, I think probably the best thing to do would be to uh, advance this to the October 22nd meeting and have it on as a as a regular item on the agenda then. Uh, I, if I may then, just as a, a, a pending the, the next city council meeting, I think it, I, what I'm hearing up here, at least with is an uh, affirmation that we're all in favor of, and it's just a, a matter of procedural path and bringing it on and passing it according to the agenda. So I think uh, from my perspective, we're all in agreement up here that both, pass it on. both questions deserve a yes, yes and, and the citizens on. and the students deserve a yes. I, I agree. I agree. That's good to hear. We just talked about emails and, and internet and open meetings <laughs> and all those kinds of things as it was, good and good. the use of technology that we have to do as, as uh, your council members. So, this is important stuff that these kids need to be aware of how to use these. It is, and, and I'll have to say for uh, for Dr. Slaughterback's uh, non-sales pitch uh, uh, information, it was pretty compelling. So, mm -hmm. um, I understand we have somebody else who would like to come up and say a few words. Uh, Mr. Carter, would you please like to come up? You know, up Madam Mayor, uh, I also want to thank Kevin, you know, on for his diligence in, in really working hard for this and all the volunteers you're working with. Uh, I, it, that's what it takes to get this done, and it takes the citizens to, to take it upon themselves to make sure this happens, and I thank you for that. Yeah. They're doing a great job, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. If I may, Kevin, I'm still waiting for my yard sign. <laughs> I, I talked to Mary over at the football game, and she told me that I was going to get a yard sign. I can you pick it up. Just sign? let me know where to go. Uh, I'll get your address from Mary. All right, great. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Carter. Well, good evening, Madam Mayor and council members and city staff. I appreciate this opportunity to come up and speak on behalf of the school district and what Dr. Slaughterbach just talked about. I am a managing partner of Ridgefield Bloomington Honda. I've run the business here for 11 years, and I am very involved in the business community, and I think it's important that the citizens hear what I hear in the business community standpoint. Uh, I agree with uh, Council Member Elliott's first comments that he highly respects the work that was done by Dr. Slaughterbach, so do we. He's got big shoes to fill, and uh, we hope that he stays engaged as much as possible for a long, long time. He's a pillar in the community. Um, what he's talking about here is investment in our future too, the business community's future. You know, strong school districts not only are good for the school district and the kids, but it's also great for the other residents and it's great for the other businesses. The stronger the school district is, the stronger we get. And the stronger we get, the more amenities we can provide for the citizens. You know, great, great educated students, um, he said, is very very true in my business. We have a lot of computerization. You don't. We're not just technicians anymore. We don't just change oil anymore. And you have to think these puzzles out, and you need to be able to read diagrams and and understand and interpret problems. And you have to have creative thinking. And this is all developed through strong schools. And in Richfield, um, the stronger the school district is, it also improves the people's. 
of wanting to come move here to Richfield, and you're gonna, it's gonna improve home sales, it's gonna improve property values, it's gonna, when you do that, you improve the tax base that's in the city. When you improve the tax base, you improve the ability and the strength of the city to provide better services for the residents. I mean, it, it all adds up. You know, I look, at, I look at every dollar I spent in business as getting a return on investment. And this is, this is a look at re getting a return on investment in the, in the residents' taxes. And I see when there's a favorable, strong possibility of a strong return on investment with all those things that I just talked about, I want to make sure that the residents look at it that way as well. And there is momentum that is built by what Dr. Slaughterback has done. We have momentum at the same time that we have a gaining economy, and this is a great time to invest, and I think it would be a, a real missed opportunity at this particular point in time with that growth if uh, these things do not pass. Thank you. Mr. Carter, it's great to hear from the business community about that business perspective. You know, we don't often have somebody come up and do that. We really appreciate that you come up and talk about how that helps you as well. I think it matters to all of us because we're all of, about us, about jobs and what the future holds for all of us and our children. So, thank you. Um, tonight, is there any other comments or questions that, uh, on these items? I want to move to uh, item three on the presentations, which is the annual meeting with the Arts Commission. Mayor and City Council members, uh, Jim Tapitsofer, I'm the uh, Parks and Recreation Director. And I'm going to be introducing to you uh, the Arts Commission Chair. His name is Kevin Close. And uh, I think Kevin has been on the Arts Commission since its inception. And I, I remember him mainly as an artist. And he was one of the uh, people that uh, submitted a, a centennial uh, logo for our centennial, and that was back in 2008. And uh, now, uh, this last year, we've got to see him as a leader, as a chair. And I got to tell you, he's been just great to work with. Uh, I think you'll be impressed by uh, the things that this Arts Commission has, has accomplished this last year. So, Kevin? All right. We haven't done it that way yet. Got to do things a little different. Keep you guys on your toes. Okay. Not bad. And it doesn't even work. Never held a computer like this before. I have to type vertically. All right. Multimedia. Move the mic over. There we go. Thanks. All right. All Very right. good technology. Yes. <laughs> so as Jim said, I'm the chair of the Richfield Arts Commission. Um, and I was just kind of looking back. I know you have all your stuff on, all the meetings on YouTube. So I was looking back uh, 2012. And um, that was sort of a transitional year for us from that year to this year. Uh, we lost all of our um, initial members. They were term limited out last mm -hmm. year, or into this year. So we lost one of our co-chairs. The other co-chair moved. Um, so we were basically kind of starting over again. So it was a great time to do some rebranding um, and just get some new blood into this and make some changes. So first thing we did was rebranded our logo. <laughs> um, and one of the things that we were always talking about is how do we get more interest in Arts Commission? How do we get more people to know who we are? Um, and as chair, I just felt like the best way to go about that was be in as many events and partner with as many people as we can. Um, so in the last six months, um, we've worked with a large number of sort of Richfield identities. Uh, Farmer's Market we work with every month. Um, we have our Art Center open house. Um, we were at the Unity and the Community event this year. Uh, we worked with the Richfield Friendship Commission on getting another uh, sculpture donated 
um, over here. That more later on that. Um, Honoring Old Veterans Memorial Board helped us get uh, recycled bikes for our bike sculpture that's going to be going up in the art center. Mm -hmm. We've worked, we were at Penn Fest, Penn Central of Richfield. Uh, we worked with Richfield Transportation Commission uh, giving information about how we think the 66th Street should look when it's mm -hmm. finished. We had some people from the Institute of Arts come see us and they wanted to know what our program was like and how we're helping the community. Uh, teen Art Show, it's at Augsburg Park Library. If you look, uh, the photo to the left, we got a welder to donate a lot of time. Uh, Judith and Dylan Allen are helping us on our bike sculpture. We're gonna work with Richfield Posters on board. This just started. They want a mural up on the side of their wall, which is gonna be really cool. Yeah. Uh, our city liaison, Mary Kay, works within MRAC. And we help a lot of Richfield artists on display here and then at the Richfield Community Center. And we're actually just about booked now for all of next year. So oh, wow. if any artists want to get in that, uh, now's the time. And then just our numbers in the last six months, we've been doing uh, so many things. And we're trying to keep just track to see differences from one year to the next. Uh, so. In May, we did, we partnered with Gap Garden at the Richfield Farmer's Market, and uh, we had, you could design a flower pot, paint it, and then bring it over. We're kind of hoping to drive traffic more into the farmer's market. And uh, we ran out of coupons. We used all 49 of the vouchers, mm -hmm. and they were happy. We were definitely happy. Uh, we had a Father's Day event and where you can make cards we actually were able to count that. We went through 75 cards. We had a tie-dye event, and 73 garments were tie-dyed. Uh, sticker art at PenFest, we went through 144 sticker arts that we know, and then 176 sand art tubes were used at PenFest. And as you can just see from the photos, we're getting in all ages, which is great. Uh, at our events, we're getting a lot of families, uh, even some older people at the... Uh, at our tie-dye event, we had people literally waiting for us to open the doors. And uh, the first couple through were like these two elderly women that were like, yeah, we're ready. Let's do it. <laughs> so it's great. We're really happy with the results that we've been getting. And um, we figured we want to hit all the outlets. We want to help families get into art, uh, teens, adults. And then just... Quick, some social media numbers. Uh, John Evans, he controls our social media for us and takes care of that. So he went back for me and looked at numbers from last year to this year. And so last year we had we were getting 602 organic impressions, which is basically individual people going to our Facebook page. This year it's 1,377 per month. Um, so in the last year, he was able to look at 2012 to now 2013, and we've doubled the people that like our Facebook page, um, doubled the number of people coming, and 10 times the number of like engaged people that are coming back. And I think that's important because then we're actually getting regulars. We're getting people that are interested and are showing up, and we've even noticed that with our events, we're seeing the same families and the same adults coming through with kids and we've noticed even there's been some birthday parties wrapped around our events, which we think is really great. Uh, at PenFest, we had a little library contest. We're gonna put up a little library, we created one, and it's gonna go up in Veterans Park by the Arts Center. So we asked the community to come up with designs for us. So we had that on our Facebook page. They could also just bring it into the community center. We had 11 different entries so then we also we threw it back at the public and, uh, during PenFest and said, all right, we're going to let you vote. We had them all up. Uh, I had made 50 ballots, and we ran out. <laughs> so I had to quick run back to my house, which was a couple blocks away, print out more. And then uh, we used all those, and uh, by the very end of PenFest, we were out again. So we had 106 total votes. Um, and that brought us down to three different 
entries, and then the art commission was going to decide the winner from those three. And then, so if you're interested in knowing who the winner is, you have to show up to the Richfield Teen Art Show. <laughs> it's going to be November 25th, 6.30 at Augsburg Park Library. We're going to uh, display the winner then. Uh, Willie Falwell is going to have a couple of his high school students paint the winning design for us, so that should be ready to go. Um, and then plus, you're just going to see a lot of great teen art. We're the only uh, teen art show that um, is like a judge city teen art show that I know of. And last year we had over 75 entries and some of the art is just unbelievable. Um, so I invite all of you to come and I know this goes on the internet and TV so anyone else interested, I invite you also. You're gonna love it. And then a couple just things that we're working on um, now. Uh, I had read, I think in the Sun Current, um, about a couple, I think it was like a year ago or so, the Friendship Commission was working with the sculptor in Heredia, and they were trying to get a second sculpture donated. Uh, and then it just sort of, kind of, I guess, disappeared or didn't go forward at all. So uh, I was investigating that a little further uh, and I was able to get in contact with Synth Mandel, who's on the Friendship Commission, and she's mm -hmm. actually in Costa Rica right now, and she's friends with the sculptor, so it worked out perfect. Um, so I asked to see if, okay, if, is he really gonna donate it again? Like, that'd be great. And uh, he is, and so Synth and Jim and um, me and the sculptor are all trying to figure how to get that take, you know, done and then back into Richfield. And we were thinking it would really be cool if it was actually outside, if you could see it outside from the Heredia room here. Mm -hmm. um, and the sculptor came up with the idea of two children playing soccer, so almost like Heredia and Richfield like together. Um, so we're really excited about that. And as you know, Richfield has so many great uh, sculptures. And it's something that Richfield I think is becoming known for and people are coming to see it. Uh, I know that people on the Edina Arts Commission were actually jealous of our uh, tour map, so oh, yeah. <laughs> we're excited about that. <laughs> so definitely whatever more sculptures we can get in Richfield we feel is the better. Um, and then that also, we had another idea. What if there was a sculpture at the ice arena? Um, as far as we know, and I was a youth hockey player myself, uh, outside any of the metro ice arenas, they're, they've never combined like art with sports. It's just not something anyone has ever thought of. And the Arts Commission was thinking that the ice arena could use somewhat of an identity, you know, something that people are gonna remember, uh, and get their picture taken with maybe, and just, be like, oh yeah, Richfield Ice Arena, that's the ice arena with the cool sculpture. Uh, we found a sculptor, his name is Ken Yackel. He played, he grew up in St. Paul, played high school there, and then he was on the uh, U of M Gopher hockey team that won the NCAA championship mm -hmm. in the 1970s. He became, uh, he majored in art, and he's done a lot of different uh, sculptures. and. He actually has a sculpture outside the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame in uh, Eveleth, Minnesota. So I got in contact with him and I was just asking him, you know, if you did this, uh, well, first would you donate the time to do it? But then also, what are some different concepts you could come up with that might be cool, out, you know, like a, something that people would remember. So he did send us some different artwork, which is at the bottom, which could be, you know, scaled up to be outside uh, of the ice arena. And for now, this is just something to think about, something I just wanted to throw out there, knowing that maybe there's certain people with more influence than me uh, that could help us do this. Obviously, there's financial cost to it. Um, and obviously, there's a couple of former professional hockey players from Richfield that maybe mm -hmm. might want to be a part of it. Uh, 
So if anyone knows of anything or would like to help us do this, get in contact with Mary Kay Champa. <laughs> um, finally, the Arts Commission just wants to thank our city liaison, Mary Kay Champa. She helps us out so much uh, daily, getting stuff ready for our different art events. Um, and also, of course, Jim Todd's on top, top of top for, He's been a huge help, and I know he's really, really probably one of the most busy men in Richfield, but he still makes time for us, which is great. Um, and then John Evans, who does our Facebook and our Twitter, and uh, it's obviously, you know, our stats have all gone up, and people are paying attention, and so we're happy to have him posting all this stuff for us. And then Judith and Dylan Allen, who are doing our bike sculpture uh, that's going to be done soon and that's another thing you should all check out because it's going to be really cool and we're having the community paint it um, at our last event and if any of you would like to be part of that sculpture you can come help paint it this Saturday 9 30 to 11 30 a.m. at the Arts Center and then afterwards once it's up you can be like I was a part of that I helped paint it um, so that's it so thanks for your time yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say you guys have been really busy, and I, I have been down and seen the sculpture of the uh, bike over there. I haven't painted it yet, but I saw a whole mm. lot of other people over there. That looks really interesting, so I have visited that. That's so exciting. Thank you for doing that and doing things like that. I hope you'll send back some pictures and stuff so we can put it up and tell people about it to go over and see it. For sure. You're going to be putting it up on the top of the wall, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's really neat. That's a really neat way to do things. And Thank you. I, I, and the teen art fair is so great. And I did get to vote on the on the little um, library. Mm. I think those are cool. We see them around the city everywhere. And I told them they, ought to, they could make a deal out of, of uh, somebody selling those things because I'd put one in my house, in my yard. That would be great to have something like that. Council members? Yeah. Council members um, you're on. a man after my own heart. Yeah. Bless you for work, all of your work on the sculptures because I view Richfield as being, you know, right after the Walker Outdoor Gardens. You know, I think we really have done a good job in the city, and we're, I'm so pleased that you're continuing to work on it. Um, I think it's great. I'm really pleased. Thanks for your, all your hard work. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Anything? You know, there's another sculptor who, who was born and raised in Richfield. Um, I don't, you're familiar with Bill Mack? No. I think Bill Mack might have been the one that designed the Hobie Baker Award. Oh, yeah. Which is the hockey ver the college hockey version of the Heisman. Bill used to live on the corner of Apple Drive. Oh. Right. Or Apple Lane. And I don't know if you've ever reached out to him. He's 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 not relatively famous, he's famous, but he goes back a long way with Richfield and it might be worth your efforts just to try to contact him to see if he would like to uh, reinvest or or particularly related to hockey. He does a lot of sports icons and everything, but but Bill uh God he I I think he went to high school when I was there. I don't know if Sue knew him also, but uh, he'd, be, he'd be a good person to reach out to just see if he still has, has fond recollections and might not want to contribute something to, uh, to the front of the ice arena. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, it would. Well, this is a great report, and it sounds like you guys are really busy and doing wonderful things and rebuilding yourselves when you lost so many uh, veteran um, uh, commissioners, I know that. So thank you for uh, all the hard work. I appreciate you coming tonight. And one other comment. Your um, wonderful presentation with all of your fades in and fades out. and um, Wonderfully well done. And um, just you're a, a tribute to what we're trying to do in the Richfield schools so that kids can really use their computers. Yeah. 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 Thanks. And I, I don't want to, to invite competition for any of us that might run for re-election again, but youth is great. You've the, the turnover when you come in with enthusiasm and new ideas and freshness, you can see it in, in your rebranding and everything. It's really, it's exciting to see, like I said, you know, to, to watch the, the, the younger generations in Richfield come up and really start moving things forward. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, next is council discussion. Under council discussion, we are looking at the HRA commissioner interviews. and. Um, we're probably looking at timing at that, I would suspect. And uh, how many interview, uh, how many applications did we get in? Uh, I believe we have seven. 
seven. That's seven. heartening too, just that they have that many applications. Seven yeah. applications. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And I know we tried to have. We said that we'd like a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. Would everybody like about ten minutes with each, or what? What do we think for timing? I'd Double say the time. Ten to fifteen. Ten I would say ten. I think we can get. Yeah. So that's that's just over an hour. And um, can we do that calendaring and let everybody know if we want to try? Do we want to try a Saturday morning or we've got an hour? That's a little over an hour. I don't know that we do. We have um, um, council before council meetings. Do we have work sessions all the way through? Or can we Cheryl, help me out. But I don't think we have. We don't have a. Do we have a scheduled study session before the twenty second meeting? Yeah, I will oh, be that's gone right. for that. Yeah. Will be. I will be coming into town on an airplane. Um, okay. But I might not make a study session. Okay, so we need to look at probably different dates and, and maybe some Saturdays. So we can do that on, on calendar online. Everybody get back to Cheryl, please, about availability for about just an hour and a half time for interviews for everyone. And then we can get back to those members. The only thing is, is we might need to squeeze one in if they can't for some reason make the Saturday because they're traveling or something or working. So Mayor, you're prim primarily looking at perhaps a Saturday morning, is that the kind of thing? Yes, I was thinking. Oh, okay. Don't you think, everyone? Is that, is that okay with the rest sure. of the council? Or? Um, council? I'm certainly available, which is short notice, the 12th. Um, yeah, we gotta give the people enough time. time. But also, if you look at the next council meeting, if they didn't, you know, we could fit in three or something. Well, that's possible. At the end, I mean, I'm, my plane is expected to arrive at 425, but, okay. you know, who knows? But I would think by 630 for sure I would be here, so you could get a few in on that Tuesday. Okay. And it might be earlier, I don't know. And maybe some another day. Yeah. Okay. We could, we could split it up, we, it'd be depending on people's availability. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we get some emails and make sure we get right back to Cheryl, because we do need to get this. Yeah. It's timely. Yeah. So we can get some interviews going. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, hats off to Hometown Hits. Uh, Council Member Sandal, I'll start with you. Um, I have one announcement, and that is that there will be an open house for anyone interested in the new redesign of 66th Street and also Portland Avenue um, that will be going forward next year. Um, the meeting will be held Thursday, October 10th this week um, from 4 to 7 at Woodlake Nature Center. So if you have any interest at all in trying to decide, you know, should we have bike lanes, ex narrow it to three lanes, whatever it might be, what are your concerns about both of those streets and what would you like to see happen in the future, um, please show up. And if, if that's not enough for you, if you need to, to do something afterwards, you should come over to the wine tasting over at the Woodlake Center over by Houlihan's in the atrium. There's still tickets available, 6.30 to 9 that evening. Um, and support your community and the Richfield Foundation that supports the city of Richfield, so. Council Member Garcia. Well, I know that uh, there will be an Affordable Health Care Act panel, which will, and um, they, this will take place the 23rd of October from 11.30 to 1 p.m. And the location has not been determined, but it will be announced. And the panel will include um, a Minsure representative, and there'll be someone from Congressman Ellison's office, also uh, Representative Linda Slocum, uh, someone from the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce, and a representative from Fairview Southdale Hospital. And that is, is, you know, really very, very important. And I'm glad that, that we have this coming up in Ridgefield and look for more details. And whenever we do have a date, you know, we'll, we'll certainly bring that up. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I want to bring up, the, I had mentioned earlier that Chicano Latino Affairs Council, which is a govern, uh, state government agency, will be coming to Ridgefield for the purpose of you know, soliciting comments from, uh, from the Latino community as well as uh, the governmental um, entities that will be represented there. And also to let us know exactly what they do and how they advocate um, in the legislative and their report to the governor and in the mandate that they have um, under Minnesota state statute. So that'll be November the 4th, and it will be held at Assumption 
Catholic Church. Uh, I believe it'll probably be six to eight. Union, uh, six to eight, eight. Yes, six to eight, and that'll probably be in the um, gym, not lunchroom area. Activity. Okay. okay. Council Member Fitzhenry. Well, I don't want to steal any of your thunder about the magicians. <laughs> Go ahead. That was you didn't get to see the game. Well, I, I got to see the game. But uh, I know the parking lot was full. <laughs> Uh, both nights, uh, but I did want to comment about a nice thing. I missed the time, but the Blue Star Moms thing in the byway at the community center, it was a nice piece, and it was, uh, it, it's important to veterans and people that support them, so yeah. appreciate that they did that. So. Yeah, that was very nice, was yeah. the Blue Star, yeah. And I'll let nice. you speak about the hockey. <laughs> uh, well, it, was, it was probably one of the most exciting games I have been. I think that the Richfield Magicians, and I, I was able to take a uh, Edwina Garcia with me one. What, what did you think? It was exciting, wasn't it? You know what? I at uh, the first period was boring, <laughs> and then once once they you know they got themselves going, it was so competitive, and you were so into it. And a puck came over, and uh, you know and, and and she caught it. Yes, she caught the puck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and but I mean it was just really exciting. I I didn't think that I would have enjoyed it as much as I did. But I was just focused on, you know, watching the whole action. It was great. And if you haven't, please attend. I mean, these guys are just, you know, somebody that we ought to, you know, we should be proud of and we should support. And I think they're going to be good role <coughs> models for our, our kids in Richfield. They're uh, phenomenal was, athletes. Yeah, so absolutely. the last game, there is, there it's two to one and we're losing. Eight seconds left in the game and the magicians score and tie it. It went over to a five-minute period. Nobody scored. So then it's shots on goal. Each team went through 10 players, mm -hmm. and the magicians did it. They pulled it off for us. So um, it was exciting. This is, this is way faster than the professional games. This is so yeah. much fun um, to watch these young kids because they're fighting literally to become pros, right? And they are good. They are really good, and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of great atmosphere there. The magician uh, mascot was there, and there's all kinds of magicians around the whole arena doing tricks for kids and everything. The kids are having a ball. This is a great family event, and I think tickets are five dollars at the door. Mm -hmm. um, this is great to go. So, you know, and I wanted to clarify something. I was, you know, I was going to say that I caught the puck in my teeth, <laughs> but you know, but I, you know, I didn't want to stretch it. So I did, I did say that I. But I didn't. It really fell right by my seat. <laughs> so I just, just to, you know, just to you be were honest. There. You were I, there. I was there, and, 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 I, and I was the first one to reach for it. It was on your pad hand, not the glove hand, so yeah, you tried it. Edwina, if you'd caught it in your teeth, you wouldn't have any teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Elliott, can you, know, you top that? <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I can't top that, but I, I have a, a another event over at the ice arena that I think will will parallel that or at least match it and um, there's you know is interesting because the chair of the Arts Commission mentioned the fact that there was some uh, professional hockey pair players from our community and there's also a nonprofit fo foundation that's run by the Hendrickson family who has two of the ho professional hockey players and on as, as a celebration of veterans the Wounded Warriors, who are one of the, the uh, hockey groups that the Hendrickson Foundation supports by providing ice time, and in conjunction with Jim Toppetshofer and Darren over at the ice rink, their, their main practice arena is the Richfield Ice Rink, and they're playing a, uh, a game, and I don't want to overstate that. I th it's either a, a team from the university, the Gophers, or it's going to be some from the wild, but the Wounded Warriors are having a game, and then there's a meet and greet at the VFW or the Legion. I'll, I'll get all the particulars on this, but it's Good November man. 10th, I believe, and it's in honor of the veterans and the Wounded Warriors are the are the prime team. And also to give you an opportunity to get introduced to the Hendrickson Foundation and, and realize okay. what this nonprofit from Richfield is doing in helping disabled and cognitive, both physically and cognitive disabled uh, uh, kids and, and adults that still want to maintain their athletic uh, pride and, and being able to play. So it's, it's really a great organization and the teams are outstanding to watch. The second thing is the Value Village is undergoing a facelift oh, yeah. and it's going to kind of tie in and, and, and make that whole corner look a little bit more updated. And I have to throw a pitch in that I, I happen to notice the sign I didn't realize is stuck a one is doing the new facade and they happen to be a client I've represented a couple times. So it's going to be wonderful work. So, <laughs> and, and the fire station will be done too at the end of the month as well. And they'll have an open house. So um, I think 
Penn Avenue's well on its way. A little bit here, a little bit there, and, and gradually it all comes together. Yeah, it does. Okay. I should also just mention that I had some conversations with some of the principals from the original, you know, Penn Central group in the organization, and um, I, I guess I'm going to put all the business people on, on Penn on notice that there's going to be a traveling circus meeting and greeting with them, and and starting now, trying to raise the funds to have an open streets next year so we can continue that tradition and bring it on without having to rely on grants or anything else. So um, if we come knocking, please let us in. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good news. Great, great things happening around the city. It's always nice to have that. Um, at this time, I'd ask for a council approval of the agenda. Council Member Sandoff, you would like so, to Oh, yes, amend? I wanted to amend the agenda. I did check with um, staff and city attorney, and since we hadn't, even approved our agenda, we can certainly amend it, and we can go ahead and put the resolution on the agenda to support the school referendums if we'd like to. Ooh, so I would add that on there. I'll second. Everybody in favor? Okay. Yeah. Um, approval of the amendus so agenda. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Approved. Okay, we'll make that right after the consent calendar. Okay. We'll make that item so. Uh, the consent calendar, city manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the city council. The consent calendar um, contains uh, tonight only four items which are then acted upon by the City Council in one motion and once the consent calendar has been approved the individual items and the recommended actions will also have been approved and no further council action on these items will be necessary. We start with item A which is consideration of approval of a resolution certifying delinquent water sanitary sewer and storm water utility accounts to the county auditor. Item B is consideration of approval of a resolution regarding establishing a one-time employee early retirement severance program for regular full-time and part-time dispatch employees. Item C is consideration of approval of a resolution in support of the 77th Street Trunk Highway 77 underpass project. And finally, item D, which is consideration of the approval of hiring WSB and Associates Incorporated to provide final design services for the North Richfield Parkway project at 63rd Street to 65th Street at a cost not to exceed $67,488. And that concludes tonight's consent calendar. I'll move the calendar. Second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item seven is a proposed city resolution supporting the Richfield School District 280 technology level. In the past, the city council has entertained similar types of city resolutions that support other entities, specifically our schools. And so at this time, um, we had this read, the resolution was read to us at the study session. So at this time, I will move that we all um, in unison agree to the proposed city council resolution supporting Richfield Public School District 280 technology level. Second. Other discussion? Um, just to confirm that people will need to vote um, on November 5th because that's the, the city election and that there will be two different levies available and if they don't vote for the first one or in favor of the first one, doesn't matter what happens with the second one, it'll fail. So if you really support encouraging technology in, in Richfield students and providing them with this, the uh, school board with sufficient funds to pay for it, um, you need to vote for both and I think this group certainly supports that. Yes, and there's plenty of information on the school website, and there's lots of traveling shows going around. I'm sure you can pick it up in the newspaper as well. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. The resolution is passed. Council Member Sandall, you have the next meeting. Thank you, Your Honor. This is uh, item number eight, and it is a continuation of a public hearing regarding resolutions regarding um, 77th Street maintenance, the district assessment process. Um, and what, what we're going to be talking about and opening up to the public if they wish to speak to the issue is having a resolution which would assess the commercial properties along 77th Street for the costs incurred to maintain the area for the year 2012 and then also adopting a resolution proposing a similar assessment process to be implemented for 2014. And then we are going to um, recommend that we remove the proposed assessment and all future 77th Street assessments involving the Sioux Line Railroad Company. So it is a public hearing. It's a public hearing. Would anyone like to come forward to speak on this item regarding the, the, the uh, resolution? Anyone? Uh, move, move, move to, to close, close the, the hearing. public hearing. 
Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 The public hearing is closed. And then if I could just speak a little bit more to it, Your Honor. Yes, please. Um, the benefit to the community of having this special assessment is that it improves the whole 77th Street corridor. Um, if you've ever driven it, you know it's a lovely street to drive. And the, way, the reason it stays that way is because we have provided funding with this special maintenance, uh, special assessment that includes irrigation, weeding, mowing of the landscaping, maintaining the landscaping and the wall. Um, and all of those things are funded through the special assessment against the businesses that are benefited by having that along their corridor. And um, it includes, um, current services include snow and ice and ru rubbish removal from the sidewalks, elimination of weeds, um, repairing water service lines, streets sprinkling, sweeping, you know, uh, removal of the snow, repair of sidewalks and alleys, and all of those things benefit the whole community. Um, so I would certainly recommend that we support it. Um, I'll second. Is there other further discussion? I have a concern. Yeah. <laughs> the railroad uh, issue, uh, it says that the Candlewood and uh, the Metris are going to be handling that. If they don't, are we going to be looking at going after the railroad. We've had other areas in the city, you know, around, uh, you know, Pleasant, either side, mm -hmm. where it belongs to the railroad, and they've chose not to, I guess, upkeep that property. And that was my concern when we pull them out of here. We got a great looking district. Now we have weeds that are knee high. Who's gonna take care of that? And are we looking at then, uh, like we would any other resident, if their weeds are too high, we'll go ahead and cut it down and assess them or what? Uh, Madam Mayor, Councilmember Fitzhenry. Um, in the case of the, of the railroad here, the railroad owns some property, not only along the railroad that runs through the property, but they had a parcel that was separate from that. They sold that parcel off to what is now the Candlewood mm -hmm. and going to be the Lemetri. That was, that was some time ago, but it got onto the district. The parcels got onto the district okay. because it had that. Now, uh, in the case of, say, the LHN, where the railroad just has property coming through, we do not assess there. So when we saw this, we kind of spotted that, that it probably shouldn't be on this as a maintenance district. On the separate issue about whether the, the condition of the railroad and the weeds, we do discuss with the railroad, and, and there are times when the city crews go out and actually do it and char charge back. Um, against the railroad uh, on some of those costs. They do not maintain it to the standards, certainly that the residents immediately adjacent to it want to see, and so sometimes we get involved. Uh, that really is a separate issue. It's not okay. part of the LHN, uh, and, and it's really true along the whole length of the railroad and not just this district. You answered my question, yeah. so thank you. Yeah, yeah I agree. <coughs> I've seen the same problems, mm -hmm. Council Member, yeah. Um, other questions or concerns? There's been a, a motion has been seconded. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Council Member Garcia. Okay, this is another public hearing regarding the special assessment role for weed elimination from private property and removal or elimination of public health or safety hazards from private property. And Minnesota State statute provides that the city can levy a special one year assessment for eliminating the public health or safety hazards or the elimination of weeds from private property. The special assessments are based on cost incurred by the city in connection with the abatement of weeds or public health or safety hazards on certain properties in which, um, which are not properly maintained by the property owner. The owner of subject properties are notified by the city to take corrective action with regard to the issue that pertains to that particular property. If they are not abated in the proper time, the city then takes a corrective action and winds up billing the property. In all cases, property owners will be notified that any unpaid charges or fees may be assessed against their property. And, um, you know, in the proposed special assessment for elimination of public health or safety hazards is approximately $3,680 with an additional 5% interest penalty. The proposed special assessment for weed elimination 
from private property is 3580 with the same additional 5% interest penalty. The cost incurred for the city staff time and cleanup of the properties to remove weeds and to do special assessment amounts is, it, uh, is included in, there's a $50 administrative fee charged to all properties. The affected property owners have the ability to prepay the original amount without interest if they do that within 30 <coughs> days. Um, from the, the time, um, from the date the council adopts the assessment. If the original property amount is not paid, then the 5% interest charge will be uh, charged. Anyway, and um, so I would, um, like this is a public hearing, I don't know. Public uh, hearing, anybody here to speak to this item? <laughs> I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Other, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 The public hearing is closed. Council member. So, Mayor, I want to uh, move that we approve the attached resolution adopting the assessment for weed elimination from private property and remove or and removal or elimination of public health or safety hazards from private property. I'll second. And I just want to say it's a smaller list this year. And we've seen, we can see that there's some homes that are finally probably being bought up and cared for a little bit better. Um, thank you to the city. I know that you've been watching it and I know I've been calling a lot in um, and we've been on a few folks, so I appreciate that. And you know, the other thing that's really nice is that when we do call something in, that the residents that made the initial, uh, alerted us initially about it are very, very pleased and, mm -hmm. and they're very thankful because they do take uh, pride in ownership. Yep. Yes, they do. Um, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Mm. Motion carries. Councilmember Fitzhenry, you have the. Thank last. you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the item under consideration is a public hearing regarding the special assessment role for unpaid false alarm user fees against private property. Richfield City Code and City Charter allow the city to specially assess delinquent false alarm user fees against the respective properties. State statutes provide that the city may level a special one-year assessment for these costs. Unpaid alarm user fees must be paid to the city within 30 days from the date of written notice by the city to the alarm user. Fees not paid within a specified time will be subject to a 10% penalty charge. The special assessment for unpaid false alarm user fees Assessed to private property provides a means for the city to recover costs incurred with the response by public safety to an alarm call on certain properties in the city that turns out to be false. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll open, uh, I'd like to uh, go ahead and open the hearing. The public hearing is open. Would anyone like to come forward to speak on this item? Oh, there's some, oh no, no, that was a mistake. <laughs> I'll move to close the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. And I, uh, I recommend action that we approve the attached resolution adopting the assessment for unpaid false alarm user fees against private property. The uh, only two properties involved are 28 West 66th Street with a uh, unpaid fee of $110 and 7234 Lindale, uh, Looks like A, a sweet number or whatever, and that is also $110. Um, I'll second. Other discussion? It's nice just, to see this go down too. Just a quick question. I, I think they are not charged the very first time they have one. Is that correct? Or Like three. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, three. it's three three times. And, yeah. and I know when I was working, when we instituted these fees, it reduced the alarms because what would happen, there was no penalty and some people thought it was easier to have the police respond and not fix their alarms and pretty soon we're at the same place all the time and yeah. mm -hmm. this encourages them to fix the problem <laughs> so so fourth strike and then you start paying yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah better use of our police this time i believe all those in favor signify by aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries mm -hmm. city manager's report um madam mayor members of the council i really don't have anything to report other than um, Cheryl, I think we got something from the National, was it the National League of Cities? That um, we have one vote 
if, if someone's going to the NLC conference, uh, and I'm not sure if, if uh, uh, Mayor, you're going to go to that conference perhaps? Thought, yeah. Okay. Um, so just the city has one vote yep. uh, at NLC at the business meeting. And mm -hmm. so um, if you're the ones who, if you're the one who's going, then uh, just to make sure you know you got the one vote. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's about that. it. Thanks. Um, claims and payroll? So, second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All in favor signify by aye. 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 Everybody gets paid. Amen. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>